Hi guys, so I want to talk today about the um, belt arms race or the grade arms race, if you like. And I, I, you know, it's something that I am. Um, I've talked in the past about um, people being opinionated and expressing their their opinions and thinking that everybody else should should conform to their view. So I, I could well appear hypocritical here when when I speak to you, but. Um, To me, a, uh, a karate grade has significance only within the style that you do it. But there is a kind of an external scale, which even, even if a first dan in my style doesn't mean the same as a first dan in in um, taekwondo or a first gup in whatever you know um something korean i guess or you know a first sash in kung fu or even a first dan in shotokan is not the same as a first dan in goju and even between two goju clubs they could have wildly different criteria of what a first dan represents um you know uh, i i i've seen um gavin Mun holland's um um club their first dan would probably kill me to try and accomplish you know they're you know tough as nails and i and i respect that that's not what i do but you know i i, I respect the criteria and then I've seen other other clubs where first dan means that you turn up for six months you know um and I'm not really going to comment on whether their first dan and, and my first dan and somebody else's first dan should be the same however there is a kind of a universal standard that that tenth dan represents the absolute lifetime pinnacle a master um and or may, maybe I'm maybe I'm misreading this, but but you know it seems to me that universally across the world you, you say somebody what's the highest grade you can get uh, in karate tenth dan tenth dan tenth dan you know jiu jitsu tenth dan okay now I have heard that in judo you can get an eleventh dan um, but but unfortunately what what happened in the commercialization of karate and this is an example of where I think it was a bad thing or even not the commercialization but the um, the popularization where reputations became more important than what they were really doing um suddenly in the magazines everybody had to talk about their grade you know you you couldn't have a website advertising your style even if your style was non-commercial you couldn't have a website where you didn't put your grade on there because because the students were choosing by this number and um i'm not sure to what extent they did because uh, because new students actually tend to be fairly um fairly ignorant of what all that stuff means but but you know that as far as they can say if you're a black belt you're good and if you're not then then you're working towards it um but 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 certainly in the in the industry as it were then um then uh you know a a 10th a dan is considered to, well to be a master uh you know a fifth or sixth dan is considered to be pretty serious um and really, you know, a, a black belt is considered to be someone who's, who's kind of, well, not mastered the basics, but, but you know, has, has, has got a good handle on the basics, shall we say. Um, and, and now I've seen, an, uh, uh, well, I'm not going to mention the style, but, but uh, an entire martial arts style now where, where there are 15th and 16th lands and where they start awarding a Dan grade every single year that you continue to train. And... Um, I suppose in one sense that actually makes sense that every year you train you get a number if you need a number um, that the, the grade is not associated to your ability but to your longevity because after fourth dan in many styles you get awarded further dans not for not for your physical ability which decreases with time but with your with the experience and knowledge that you've gained by being around for a long time but the trouble is that in any style, um, a Dan grade doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you know, that you're awesome. It means that you might have met those criteria, but especially as you get older, your ability to meet those criteria effectively um, um, may decrease. You know that 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 you you may do the kata, but you may not be very awesome doing it. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else I want to say. I I I I just have an innate um, an innate fear when when grades are used as a marketing tool, not as a as an indication of longevity or competence, then that makes me very uncomfortable. Uh, people people bemoan 
um, non-traditional styles, and I I am not quite so um, hardline as that. But but I do feel that Dan Gray should mean something, not just um, something to put into a newspaper or you know a, a magazine to make yourself look better. Uh, and in fact, um, if you um, if you gave me a martial artist. Well, for example, uh, looking at black belts, um, I have known people over the years who have taken their black belt and deliberately dragged it behind a car so that it would wear quicker. And and to me, that's contemptible, because they're they're trying to um, they're trying to claim experience that they don't actually have by 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 indicating that their belt's worn out quickly. And I, to me personally, I think that's the same as buying a silk belt because you know it wears out quickly, not because it looks better, because it'll be worn out in a year. Um, uh, and and uh, yeah, I I um I don't have a lot of respect for people who do that. I I think however you look at martial arts, whether you consider it to be sport or you consider it to be traditional, um, surely there should be some some baseline of integrity. Um, and and uh, if you are trying to pretend to be something that you're not, then that seems not to represent any integrity. I wouldn't want to train with somebody, even somebody very good who deliberately aged their belt to make themselves look even better than they were. Um, and likewise, I wouldn't want to train with somebody who who um, took on extra grades just to big themselves up. I mean, it's it said that um, Yamaguchi awarded himself a 10th Dan. Um, and um, I don't know if that's true. If it is true, um, I suspect it, that was the, an early example of marketing, but uh, you know, e even even looking back at the earliest black belts who just awarded themselves black belts because they were masters, you could argue that that was marketing as well. Uh, you know that they they felt a need to differentiate themselves from their students to make themselves look better by having some some difference. And you know, I mean, they could have worn a, a pointy pope's hat for for all the difference. I mean, that's what it amounts to, doesn't it? Um, and you know, I'm I'm uncomfortable with people who feel the need to be themselves. I understand, you know, in a class, for example, I don't like to be addressed as sensei, but I I accept the title simply because um, it's good for the students to have that difference between them and me, particularly for uh, junior students. You know, it, it establishes that there's a relationship, teacher-student relationship, and that we're not all just mates in the dojo. And and so that means when I speak, they shut up and listen. And and I think that's necessary because we're in an environment where where people can get hurt if they don't do what I tell them. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think that's all I've got to say about that. But I, I'd value your opinion, guys. Thanks very much.